Well, good evening. This is the first meeting for the Conservation Board in the year 2021, which we're all hoping will be a much better year than last. Uh, with us tonight, we have uh, Doug Sangster, the town planner, and uh, with him, uh, Brad Kamas, and uh, Paul Sugnett, a member of the Conservation Board, is with us tonight, as is Daniel Moore, Roseanne Cohen, Bert Gorton, Patricia Schickler, uh, Jeff Bartocci, and myself, Jim Olmsted. So that's it for the board. And uh, so, and we have uh, with us from the Trails Committee, uh, Eileen Rice. Is it Reese or Rice? Reese. Reese. Yeah. I know the correct German pr pronunciation is Rice. <laughs> well, I'm glad, glad to be clarified. <laughs> So, uh, order of business, um, we're uh, going to um, start with approval of the minutes. I hope everybody took a little time to uh, look over the minutes that uh, Doug got out to us. Are there any uh, suggestions, and let's go in reverse order here, uh, suggestions on the minutes of October 6th. Did anyone find anything that needs change there? And we had made some changes to a couple of the minutes uh, earlier in the year. So we also are looking at minutes from, uh, is it July 7th? And also minutes of June 2nd. So we had uh, a few issues to be addressed on all of those. Does anyone find a need for any changes? Is there a motion to approve the minutes of June 2nd? So moved. Second. And no objections. We'll consider those minutes approved. And how about July 7th? So moved. Move to approve. Second. And no objections. We'll consider those approved. And the minutes of October 6th. Move to approve. Second. And without objection, we'll consider all of those minutes approved. And thank you, Doug, for getting those out to us. Do we have uh, communications to the board? Uh, I haven't received any mail. Um, so I do know we're waiting on um, hopefully county uh, soil and water conservation district will be sending us some stuff. Um, it's usually around this time we get the, uh, their tree and shrub program live. Doug, your audio is not coming through real great. Uh, can we fix that? Looks like we killed it. Can you, can you hear me? <laughs> Okay, I heard that. Okay. Um, so we haven't received any mail. Um, we're expecting, or I usually expect around this time, the uh, our program flyer for the Monroe County Water and Soil Conservation Districts. Um, they do their, usually do their tree and shrub program. Um, I haven't received that yet, but um, I'm hopeful we, we receive that soon. Okay. So, um, Hmm. All right. So for tonight, we have two projects to consider. And one is the, what I used to affectionately refer to as Dolomite Lake. It's uh, officially, it's 100 Old Quarry Lane which is now um, owned by RIT. So uh, Doug, why don't you uh, take us through that application if you would. Okay. 
So hopefully you guys can see my screen. We do. I've got it loaded up here. So if you're familiar with it, it was the old uh, Redmond Quarry. Um, it's changed hands a few times, but ultimately it was donated to um, RIT, um, who got a conditional use permit to um, use it for educational, broadly for educational purposes. Uh, they didn't really have a, um, a solid plan at the time. So, you know, initially they were, you know, doing water sample qualities and some biological sciences studies down there. Um, but they came in and approached um, staff. There is a, a large facility. Um, it was sort of built as a residence, but it's uh, unconventional in its layout. Uh, it's, it's set up pretty well for entertaining. And uh, RIT is looking to um, host RIT-based events and conferences and seminars at the site. Um, so they are um, coming to the planning board ultimately for um, a modification to the conditional use permit um, for to, to expand it to include the events as part of a conditionally permitted use. It's um, not really something that is um, traditionally permitted within a residential zoning district, which is, this project is within, as well as site plan approval for 51 parking spaces. A uh, question here, um, they already got approval for a, what is it, a non-conforming use uh, from the zoning board? Yeah, so we, we, we consider it a, um, so under our, under our traditional zoning, there are things that are, are, are permitted and there are what we call conditionally permitted uses. Um, they're uses that require a little greater scrutiny um, than a traditionally permitted use. So it does require you know, as, as a conditional use permit. Um, educational institutions, things like schools, um, you know, all of our schools are in residential zoning districts. They are allowed as a conditionally permitted use. Um, this also being a school, uh, you know, RIT is a, a university institution, sort of falls underneath that educational use and based on what they originally approached, the zoning board for um, was the ability to use the property for uh, broad Excuse educational me a uses. Excuse mm -hmm. me, is everybody else getting a lot of uh, backwash, back sound on there? Yes. yes. <clears throat> That's yep. very hard, very hard to hear. Like okay. a, I, I think what happens is that uh, we, we get feedback because people aren't muting their their own microphones and and so their speaker is coming back yeah, through their own on this, but it's computer. Okay, not much I okay can do so about could that. everybody mute who's not talking? I'll do my best to direct the microphone so it's it's not picking up. Um, so they they came in for um, sort of broad educational uses. Um, it wasn't really well defined, but um, you know the way I think they originally presented it was, you know, they're going to come through and they're going to do, um, you know, they were going to do, you know, they have a biological sciences department. They're going to do, you know, water quality studies and, you know, ecological studies. Um, so. Um, events aren't really covered under that educational use and would be considered sort of a separate use in addition to their educational use. Uh, so it does require a modification of their conditional use permit. Um, and uh, since they're doing site plan approval with the planning board, um, we made a determination that the planning board would be the one to handle the conditional use permit or modification to the conditional use permit, um, as well as the site plan approval for the additional um, parking. Would be the if total I, parking. Sorry. <laughs> if I understand parking. you, this won't go back to the uh, to the zoning board, is that right? No, um, at this time, it, it won't go back to the zoning board. Um, uh, the way the town code is written, um, it's very broad in handling conditional use permits. Um, uh, in general, both the planning board and zoning board have jurisdiction uh, when it comes to conditional use permits. And in many cases, the way we do it um, 
is really how it originates. Um, so in this, so originally there there was no site plan uh, approval. It was it was more of a, sort of a variance use uh, for the condition use permits. So the zoning board handled it. In this case, because they're coming back for site plan approval, um, and we're going to have the planning board do it. Uh, it didn't make sense to bring it back before two boards um, when they already had to come to the planning board for site plan approval. So um, since both boards can handle and have the, the authority to do conditional use permits, um, we made the determination that the, the uh, planning board could handle both the conditional use permit modification and the site plan approval. Doug, Doug this is Bert. Uh, on, on the picture you've got in front of us, what's existing and what's proposed? Um, so as it exists, and let's see if I can, I'll try to, well, just give us a rough idea, at least. I mean, is that light gray area the proposed? I'll pull it up now. Sure. It looks like it says the new parking spaces. So this is sort of what exists right now. Okay, um, thank this you. This is a little older image. Um, they do sort of have the loop in the front for the driveway. Okay. Um, this does exist to the garage. Um, so what they will, what they're proposing. So this sort of parking area here will be new space. Okay. Um, they're going to expand the loop, get rid of this area here, change that back to grass, okay. expand the loop out to include the parking. Okay. They've they've also asked, um, and it'll be under review both by um, the planning board, but also um, town staff is currently reviewing it to do um, possibly a tent on the site whenever, if they have events that are too large to be fully facilitated within the building. Um, What's that, so that orange that's, thing? Um, as part of it, they're proposing to do a garden, uh, a very a large garden. Um, we've explained to them several times that they really don't need a permit to do a garden. Um, it's, it's not a permittable. <laughs> Depends what they're growing. It's not a permittable use, really. I mean, I mean, it's well. If it, it was a farm, or if they were doing some agricultural farming, I mean, and yeah. even then, there's you know, that's that's ag and market yeah. stuff. Yeah. But in sure. this case, it's it's a decorative garden. Um. So they're proposing to do a garden as part of that. Um. In addition, is... they'll be doing some other. Um. And they're working. It's it's not really under the purview of the planning board. We've 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 been in discussions with them on this as well. Um, if I were to go back up to the main image here, they show some areas with some different color lines um, as part of the application, um, though not necessarily under the planning board's review, more under the, in the town engineer's review, um, under EPOD permits. They're looking to do some um, erosion control protection measures. Um, the way the site is, um, that road, it really, um, sort of goes down, uh, you know, it's water sheet flows quickly across it. And I guess it's, it's led to some erosion problems. So they're, they're looking to do some, um, some grading and erosion control protection measures to reduce the amount of water sheet flowing um, across the property uh, and try to stabilize some of the slopes. Cause that property does sit um, significantly lower than old Penfield road and, you know, sort of the lands up here to the north. This is Pat. Um, I have a question. So uh, they're, they're saying events, and one would think, oh, an event here and there, but let's take it to the extreme and say it gets used seven days a week. Is that going to create a problem for, it's, it's like, okay, 50 parking spots, so that would be the maximum number of cars there? Because uh, you're, uh, you're mentioning that they're going to use a tent if it gets too big for the building. So I'm just wondering what effect that would have on traffic or, you know, I don't so know where the, the nearest homes are to the area. But. So I'll pull up a map here. So there is an existing, and it, it, it it's a little nicer than this now, but there's an existing gravel area off the side. They would use that as overflow parking. Um, the nearest properties uh, are likely the apartments down along um, Old Penfield Road. And then there, there are a few streets tucked in on the west side of Panorama Trail and a few homes tucked back there. Um, they sit substantially higher. Um, if I were to 
pull it up in GIS. There's uh, this. This is a substantial slope down um, from Blossom, from Panorama Trail, and from Old Penfield Road. Um, it really sits sort of down in a bowl. Um, as part of it, we are, you know, it'll be a discussion point with them um, in terms of what they may be allowed to do um, in terms of amplification of sound. At this point, they have not asked for any outdoor amplification of sound or any additional outdoor lighting. Um, that may come up as part of the planning board's review, um, just because they, they may have concerns with um, safety. RIT has stated that any event that will go on down there will be RIT sanctioned and will have at minimum at least one RIT public safety officer on site um, and possibly more if they are doing um, sort of traffic control. When you talk about RIT security being on site, are we talking 24 seven or what are we talking? Um, so they do have a facilities person. I don't believe who is there 24 seven, but he is, he regularly visits. Um, the site is currently gated and locked um, from the roadway. It is still accessible via the water. Um, though I do know RIT has been taking um, some steps in that. I mean, the previous owners had posted the site, but we're not uh, as aggressive um, with uh, trespassers. Um, I, I do know the the site is still accessible through the Arundaquake Creek, and I do know they have issues with um, folks um, either entering from Arundaquake Creek on kayaks because there's a kayak launch over here at Ellison Park as well as fishermen coming down off of Panorama Trail and through other, um, you know, hiking trails and things coming onto the site. But um, uh, up at the up at the street, it is gated, it is locked. Um, and um, that's really the only major access point. How will we so, visit the site? Um, I do have in, I do have the information uh, of the the um, facility or project man or um, site manager for the site. Um, he has offered to allow the boards to do um, and staff to do site visits. Um, we would just have to set it up with him. Yeah, leave that picture that you have on the screen for a minute, and show us exactly how we access it? So um, old Penfield Road, um, you know, comes off of Penfield Road, just, you know, west of Tops Plaza and then up by General's Farm Market, um, just past the entrance to the apartments. There is a road going up. This is an older picture. There's a, a larger gate here than what is shown um, they did install uh, more fencing and a, another gate. So there is a road down into there. Um, so it's it's sort of right at the bend on Old Penfield Road. And th this would be the way to access it. There is a paved road that goes all the way down and into the site. Can you go through that access point again, starting from Old Penfield Road and move your picture and your cursor much more slowly? Okay, yes, I can do that. So um, if you're familiar with the new apartments that were built here on Penfield Road, yeah. there's Old Penfield Road that sort of starts at the substation. If you're coming from the east side, you can go come in by the now. substation. Go slow. <laughs> yeah. go slow. You come up Old Penfield Road. And then you pass Sable Oaks Lane. Um, that's where the new apartments are, Ellison Heights Apartments. And right as you come around the bend here, this doesn't quite line up, but right as you come around the bend here, there is a, a road that goes down and a gate. The gate is set a little bit back off the road, um, but this is fenced along the whole way. There's a gate there. 
it'll look something similar to that. So this is heading west towards Gentles Farm Market. This is heading east back towards like Brook Hill um, yeah. Apartments and the Genesee Conservation League um, Gun Club. And there's there's a sort of a road off to the right. I believe it's marked 100 Old Quarry Lane now. It, it originally was marked, I think, uh, 1530 Penfield Old Penfield Road. Uh, I think was a previous address. It's the old quarry. Yep. So yeah, it's the old we, quarry. If we elect to do a site walk, we'll need to call this person who's uh, on site. Yep. And I could, I can, we can, I can work with you guys to set up a meeting. Um, I know um, staff is currently working on setting up a meeting with a couple of the planning board members. So if we, would, if a couple of the conservation board members would like to join, I can see if we could. Um, uh, set up a time with them. Um, it would be town staff, a couple of planning board members, um, as well as their engineer and um, the RIT um, site manager or facilities manager. And when does this come before the planning board? Uh, this one will be coming before the planning board uh, January 14th. There's not a lot of time to get this done. I believe it's January 14th. I may, I may have, let's see, yeah, 12 7. Yeah, so this one will be before the board January 14th. Um, at this point, it is a sketch plan application, so it, it's still in the concept phase. Um, after this, we'd expect, you know, if the planning board um, is sort of supportive, we'd expect by March or April maybe to have a preliminary final application, which is when they'd actually get approvals. At this point, it's a sketch plan application. So the only thing they'll get out of this meeting possibly is a sketch letter, um, which highlights the concerns uh, and comments from staff, the board and the public. So we're not looking at producing a written report at this time, but uh, we would like to be uh, included in the site visit. Okay. And it could be something that you guys work on a report as it goes through. I'll keep you updated when we get revisions. Um, uh, staff is currently reviewing it. I think we just sent out um, a PRC memo or project review committee memo this morning um, on the application. So I can get that to you guys as well for your review. Um, but anytime we get revisions, I can send it off to you guys. Um, if you want to you know, start drafting a report now and then issue it once they, they go into preliminary final, which will have a little bit more detail than what they provide here. This is, this is more the concept level. They want to make sure the planning board is comfortable first with the modification of the conditional use permit, because if, if the board's not really supportive of that, then it, it doesn't make sense to go into full engineered plans. Um, that's sort of why we have these sketch plans, um, is to be able to, to make sure that um, what they're proposing is feasible or is, is um, realistic before we, we move on to preliminary final. So do we have a couple of volunteers that would like- I to volunteer. Present? That was no. all? Yep, I will do it. Okay. Who would like to partner with him? I'd like to learn if possible. Okay. No one there? That, that was Daniel? Yes. Okay, so uh, Daniel and Noel, and uh, appreciate your service on that. And uh, so we'll, we'll have a confidence that you'll have an opportunity to uh, visit the site with uh, sure. a couple okay. of members of the planning board and a couple of town staff. So how do we, uh, how do we propose staying in touch on that, Doug? Uh, uh, I'm going to be sending, I'll be sending out an email um, on that here shortly. Uh, we've, we've just been discussing a few dates with town staff and I, I talked with their engineer yesterday. Um, so it, it would probably be within the next few weeks, uh, but we don't have uh, a date picked out yet. Okay. So it sounds like there will be at least the preliminary meeting with the planning board before we'll be issuing any kind of report. And uh, Hey, Jim. Yes. I just want you to know I was 
yelling to uh, be part of that, but I forgot I was muted. Oh, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, I'm I'm sure they'd welcome your uh, joining them. So, okay, so we'll add Jeff to the uh, list of willing participants. Good. Okay. Okay, so um, any uh, questions from the board beyond what we've decided here? And uh, if not, we'll move to the other project. So I guess we're moving to the other project, which uh, is 1700 Baird Road. And uh, I'm sure, uh, Doug, if you could pull up a, a broad overview of that area, uh, everybody I think will remember that uh, the north end of Baird Road got redirected to the west of where it used to uh, hit Atlantic. And uh, they did that for, for site issues. Um, and that was a great improvement. Uh, any, any of us who have ever tried to make the left turn at that intersection of Baird and Atlantic uh, know that uh, there were some real site issues there. So when, that, when they did that, there was also a, uh, a fairly large farm on Atlantic that uh, wanted to split off most of the property for uh, I think that individual's son. To, uh, there we go. To uh, yeah. So uh, Doug, what 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 you would do here is show us the uh, Baird Road extension access to uh, to the newer home on that property. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so they <clears throat> let's uh, let's continue to show enough of the overall picture that we can still see Atlantic Avenue to the north. Okay, so mm -hmm. there's a farmhouse and a barn right on the curve. Okay, so <clears throat> all of this property used to be one and then they uh, they subdivided so that the uh, the the house why don't you use your your cursor doug to show yeah that that house was was built i believe that was the son of the owner of the farm property and so they subdivided it and they ran into some real issues. You can see the the drainage ditch there. I'm going to call it a drainage ditch, but the DEC called it some higher level stream and uh, gave them quite a bit of grief trying to get the access uh, across that stream or drainage ditch. Where is the, where is the drainage ditch? Yeah, it's, it's in blue. Pat. Okay. 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 So getting across that, the DEC gave them quite a, quite a real struggle. They didn't want a pipe uh, in there. And uh, they almost required them to build a bridge, which frankly, I thought was uh, an overreach. I think eventually they did approve a large uh, pipe essentially uh, to carry the stream. Am I remembering that correctly, Doug? Um, I'd have to go back and do a little bit more research. I looked a little bit into some of the project files that we still had digitally. Um, unfortunately, back I mean, even in the early 2000s when this project was done, we didn't have, we didn't do a lot of things um, electronically. Most things okay. was through paper, so I'd have to pull out some of the old record files on that. Some of you old timers on the board, do you recall, as I did, that uh, they almost forced them to put in a bridge instead of a, a culvert? Yes, I agree, Jim. I kind of yeah. now remember that whole issue, yep. So anyway, now at this point, um, the younger son of the original owner uh, wants to um, subdivide again to allow five properties to be built on the east side of Baird Road. And um, so, yeah, those yeah, those five. 
So, Leo, well, that's a good picture. Let's let's stop right there for a minute. So, north is to your right in this picture, and there is a proposed home for the southernmost of these five lots. Uh, in the short EAF, they refer to this property being largely a flat uh, field without a lot of topography, but there is about a 10 foot drop off from the front to the back of the southernmost proposed home. And uh, so I, I'm not sure I would have called it largely a flat field, but, and so when I looked at this, I thought, this is kind of tight. I mean, this is a pretty good sized house on a modestly sized lot. And yet the lot to the north of that is considerably smaller. I think if I remember correctly, we're looking at a 160 foot wide lot for the, uh, the one with the proposed home. And then I think we're looking at, what is it, 130 or 140 feet? 125 for the next 125. lot. 125, okay, for the next one. Um, go back to the topography, if you would, Doug. Yeah, and Oops. you look at the, uh, the finished topography for the southernmost lot. Hard to keep from jumping around, isn't it? Okay. It, I, I click something on the mouse and it, yeah. it zoomed really far. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I'm looking at lot number two or it's labeled 102. And I'm thinking you're doing all that to the topography of 101. Uh, what does that do for me? And, uh, you know, and I... <laughs> If I were interested in building on lot number two, I guess I, I wouldn't like all these uh, topographic changes that I see happening in 101. So uh, whoever looks at this project, I, I my thought was, and, and by the way, taking into account where you see the, uh, the drainage easement, uh, my thought was you'd be better off to uh, make all three of these lots bigger, uh, starting with lot one, so that you're not messing with the topography of lot two and making lots uh, two and three maybe into uh, one lot. In other words, looking at these first three lots, the 101, 102, and 103, my own personal feeling was that should be two lots. And they'd be generous lots at that point, but the topography changes for number 101 wouldn't be spilling over into 102. So I, I would take these three lots and make them two lots. And then uh, we can look at lots four and five, um, which I think would be, uh, would be fine. Um, but I think that, frankly, I think that makes more sense, but, uh, well, Doug, excuse me, Jim, but, but Doug, so for our lots 101, 102, 103, are those conforming to zoning requirements? Uh, yes, they're all, all greater than. Oh. So this area is R120, so it's 20,000 square foot lot minimum. Uh, I want to say, and I don't think it's on that one, I want to say the smallest lot is 102 at 25,000 square feet. Um, 101 is the largest at 32,000 square feet. So I mean, the, the, so the case can be made to Jim's point. I don't know if there's much authority to say, no, you can't have three lots, make it two. But we could be the conservation board, right? You could be pretty strong about, and, and unfortunately, I'm on the, not on a laptop, it's on the tablet. So I have to take a little bit closer look at those contour lines. But you'd make the case about, the impact of those contours from lot one to lot two, right, Jim? I, I don't know is as much of a leg to stand on to say, make it three, not two. 
because they're going to fight back on a money standpoint. But if yes, you can I, say, I, I agree with you, Bert. Uh, the, yeah. the other thing is that uh, you've got a pretty significant part of lot three uh, being impacted by the drainage easement. So another well, reason I, that I... I believe yeah. part of the reason they kept lot three wider. Um, so it was, you know, lot two is the narrowest. Lot three is wider than lot two. And I, I believe part of the reason they did that was because of the drainage. Um, you know, whether that's part of the hip brook or whether that's just some little tributary that was, um, you know, or drainage channel that was dug by a previous farmer. Um, I think they accounted for that in their, in their widening of that lot. Doug, is there any communication between that drainage uh, easement, drainage ditch, uh, and the uh, pond between uh, uh, Baird Road and the extension of Baird Road? Yes, I believe so. Um, I'd have to can't pull it up here. I think it might be a little better. Yeah, so that ditch, I believe, flows down here. I think it is piped under the road. I'd, I'd have to verify this um, and pull up some old, uh, see if I can pull up some of our, our, our storm sewer maps. Um, but I, I believe it is, I believe it does go and it gets piped underneath the road. I think it runs along the west side of the road and then daylight's here next to the pond where this acts as an overflow. Um, for the pond. So if the pond were to overflow, it would flow into this channel. And then ultimately it heads north and into the thousand acre swamp. So all uh, these uh, homes are going to have, uh, it's Pat, by the way, all these homes are going to have curb cuts uh, to Beard Road? Uh, that is correct. Or the last, the, the northernmost house actually has its curb cut onto the extension of Baird. Oh, okay, I didn't see that yet. Yeah, so the, the last one will be on, yeah, sort of Baird Road extension um, where it comes off. This is Eileen. I think it's awful that they're dumping another four driveways on the Baird Road there. Yeah, I was thinking that too, Eileen. I was thinking this might be a, a case where the best access might have been its own private lane running north-south uh, parallel to Baird Road. Uh, and from that private lane accessing these houses uh, so that you wouldn't have all those curb cuts. Hey, hey Jim. Yeah. Doug, can I, this is Deb. Can I just a ask a question here? Is this, um, by any chance are these lots, are these for his family? For his children, do do you happen to know that dog? I, 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 um, I, I believe one of them was planned yeah. for a child, but I'm not sure about the rest of them. Because I do know the scores of family, and I was wondering about that, and maybe maybe that would have some, you know, maybe changing the the entrance so, into that. Um, I I can certainly bring that up with them. Um, so you know, sort of a little history on this is at one point they did come in for a sketch plan. I believe it was 2004 where they showed essentially properties or, you know, plans to develop along Baird Road as well as um, along Atlantic Avenue. And to that end, I think they installed utilities along both of those roads to support um, mm -hmm any future development. Um, as far as uh, a private drive, uh, that is a comment we can make to them. Um, Baird Road here is a town road, so ultimately any curb cuts would have to be approved by um, our public works department um, in terms of their location and um, and whether they, they how they, how they, uh, they come out onto the town roads. I think they'd have a problem with lot 101 coming in the back way if you have such a grading change there. You know, maybe the other ones, 102 to 105. Well, the grading change coming right off the road is not particularly steep, 
but then it gets. No, I meant if you to put a if you put a access their driveway to the back and not on aired road, wasn't that what you were proposing? I was proposing a private road running parallel to Baird. Right. So would it be? Oh, would it be right to the front then? Parallel. It would be. A, it would be a north south uh, north south private access road. Right, but it would just be um, a few feet away from Baird Road. Yeah. Then, not, right. not to the back. Yeah. Oh, not right. to the similar back. Similar to. I gotcha. I'm thinking gotcha. he's thinking something similar to like what we did here on Wayland Road or what we've okay. done here on Wayland right. Road in the 70s yeah. where they come off. Okay, sorry. The so houses so. are served by a private drive, which then comes back out over here. I yeah, heard the I, north south and the parallel, and I just didn't think about uh, like that. I think we did them along Jackson oh, yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm saying is I think that would be the ideal in this situation. Perfect. So this is Paul. Let me ask a question. Is this not the proposed, isn't it consistent with what's to the south? Yeah, for the most part. Um, I mean, we, we looked at this. If you go further south and there was that development of those four houses and the curb cuts were going to be out on beer, and it's like it's consistent with the neighborhood. I'm, I'm not yeah, so, so against if they added curb cuts. It's, it is what it is. So most of the lots to the south are longer. They're they're about the same width, um, though most of their their rear yards is within wetlands. Um, this is you know they sort of back up to what is the Hipbrook Preserve here. Um, although I believe the school district owns this property, but you know all this is Genesee Land Trust property around it. So while these lots wouldn't be as deep, you know in terms of their usable area, they're very similar to what's in the area. Um, you know, our, you know, R one twenty is is the standard in the area. Um, the Ryan Homes developments were done doing two seventy eight, or it might have been two eighty one at that point. Um, so they are, you know, these ones are on smaller lots, but for most of the development around it, they're, you know, they're they're half acre lots. Yeah, they're, they're roughly half acre lots. So they are they are consistent it, or larger than required by code too. I think uh, even building a parallel uh, road would cut into the front of the property so that they would have to push the homes that much further back if that's where the topography is the great, you know, changes the greatest. Well, so beyond, the beyond their back lot line, uh, it does get relatively flat. Yeah, so the, the dotted lines here are the existing topography, and they're, they're, I believe, one foot contours. So this is a drop of one feet, one okay. foot. And the property overall is about 20 acres. Um, if you include the farmhouse in it, I believe it's closer to 30 um, or 25 acres. Um, so I think, you know, realistically, I think they could do the private drive and they wouldn't have to really move the residences from where they're proposed. It would just, it would largely eat up most of the front yard, which is similar to what we see in some of the other areas where we've done that okay. is they just right. don't have as much front yard okay. space. Um, but it, it is something I can, you know, we can, we can bring to the applicant and see if they are uh, amenable to. Yeah, I guess it's the difference between, you know, does it, meet the code yes but would it be better uh maybe it would be better if they had their own private drive but um yeah okay um, my concern still remains with the topography of lot one spilling over into lot two i to me that doesn't make a lot of sense and that's um uh, you know i um I'll, I'll talk with our engineers i you know, I believe that's probably a concern they have as well. Um, usually, we don't like to see uh, topographical changes like that on on an adjacent property. Um, at this point, while they show future residences here on these ones to the east or to the to the north, um, they are only coming in for final site plan approval for lot 101. 
So any of the future residences uh, will be required to come back in um, at minimum as, you know, if it's just a single lot as an admin application for site plan approval and if uh, multiple lots back to the planning board for site plan approval. There's been no um, approval on five on a five lot subdivision yet. And they're nope. coming for that as well. Nope. So they're, they're looking for the five lots to subdivide out each of the five lots. Okay. Um, but they're only okay. coming in for a site plan approval for 101. So okay. if they were to get granted the subdivision and, and approval, the full approvals, okay. they could only build a house on lot 101. To build a house okay. on 102, 103, 104, 105, they would have to um, submit another site plan application for review. But they would still have conceptually approval for four additional lots. Yes, yeah, they would have the lots for them. They would just, it would be siting of the house and any grading modifications and things like that that they have to go through. So as far as I'm concerned, there is still the issue of the topographic change spilling over into lot two. Yeah, and that's, I believe that's, you know, we'll be making a comment to them through our, our PRC memo about that. Well, you would think that they wouldn't want to do that in terms of any, um, you know, ease of selling lot 102 is you know as a home uh for how you know how it's going to you know as you said jim impinge on that lot or affect that lot because of the grading okay and the grading um, from lot one was, was i wouldn't want i wouldn't want to buy it <laughs> so we're down to uh who would like to take a look at this project i i can look at it with somebody else hopefully I can um, do that with you okay all right so it sounds like uh, Pat and Roseanne is that right yes can you uh, what so is this also due for the 14th no this one is in for February 11th and they're coming in um, as a preliminary final application so they are they are seeking approvals um, with this application Okay, so we have till the next, uh, the February meeting. Yep, yep. Okay. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to speak for the planning board. I don't think this will be a one meeting application for them. Um, so um, the public hearing will be on the 11th, but I, I don't expect them to approve it on the 11th. I expect there to be, to uh, be you, more. You want to, okay, let me put it a different way. You want to report from us for the February meeting. Yes, that, that would be helpful. Okay, yes. okay, all right. Okay. Can Any you, other um, comments? Can you mail um, one to each of us so we don't have to, uh, within safe distance, to pour over the actual plans? <laughs> yep, yep, I can mail, I, we can we can provide copies of the plans uh, for your review and uh, I can uh, make sure those get to you guys. Okay. Anyone have any additional comments on this project? And so we're down to uh, other business. Um, let's see, I know we have a number of projects going on around town. Um, how about the uh, Empire Boulevard project is something to bring us up to date on first. Uh, Empire Boulevard, uh, Bayview Landing. Um, I actually, I'd have to look. I, I'm not 100% sure where they're at with that. Um, I know they were in front of the town board. Debbie, did the town board approve that? I believe they approved the project, it, correct? Can you hear me? Yes, it, it, was, it, it was approved. Okay, so we're um, at this point, um, I think we're awaiting um, plan revisions. We sent them a PRC memo. Um, we sent them a PRC memo um, at the end of uh, 2020, and I think we're just we're waiting to hear back from them. Where, where is Bayview? Which is Bayview Land? Okay. Is? Oh, not recognizing the name, I guess. Um, it is the one on you know behind K2 Brewing. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we sent them a PRC memo okay. on. The one it'll be right here, twelve eleven. So we sent them a PRC memo on December fourteenth, and we're waiting um, revised plans uh, for staff's review. 
the one that almost every conservation board member member has visited at one time or another, I think. Walking yeah, they've all been, the way up the hill. All they, the way up the hill. <laughs> yeah, they they uh, they were on uh, a board's agenda for quite a while. Okay. Uh, between the town board and the planning board, so they they were. We've, years we've done, I think and we years. Did three or four years. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Pat, dog, just so you know, it, that was not a unanimous vote, but it did pass. Um, the, the board was split on the decision on that. I was against it as well yeah. as another. Okay. Um, what would anyone else like to uh, revisit when we have Doug and, and Debbie here with us? All right. Well, it sounds like uh, if you like, I can briefly go through, you know, other projects we have or, um, you know, other proposals that are that are either before the boards or, um, you know, projects that are under construction, if you guys are interested in that. Um, Doug, so I'm you, sure Doug, we're, oh, sorry. Doug, Doug, you want to give an update on where we, how we are doing on the Jackson Road, the old Christmas tree? Uh, so that, property? so that they're they are currently under construction. Uh, I believe he got the road in um, just before winter, and he, you know, he's working on um, a lot of the mass grading and uh, the new pond on um, next to the existing pond on um, the town property, uh, mm -hmm. Forty Six uh, Autumn Oak. Uh, we expect the first house he, he came in, I believe he has a building permit for the model home, which will be right up along Jackson Road. Um, we're not expecting the subdivision map to be filed until March of 2021, um, so or March of this year. Um, so I, I wouldn't expect houses before um, early summer. Are there sewers all the way? Are there sewers there? Yep. Yeah, they brought the sewers across. Um, so I, they brought the sewers uh, from um, Autumn Oak over through the rear section of the property um, uh, to support gravity sewers uh, a little better than going out the front to Jackson Road. So they, they are on sanitary sewers. Or they will be on sanitary sewers. Um, I know Panorama Park had been a discussion point. At this point, we haven't heard anything back um, either from the applicant or the engineer on Panorama Park on, on um, another building. Um, I shared with you guys, I believe, um, at the end of October, um, the town engineer sent uh, a letter um, essentially um, stating that he, you know, that they we're not protecting the pods as well as, as um, they initially said they were and that um, staff was not supportive of the initial projects that they had proposed as being building B or lot three. Um, so at this time, we, we haven't heard anything from them and we're still waiting on, you know, if, when they come back. I don't know if there's any other projects the board was interested in or any other development. Uh, I can't find my list of agreed dates for meetings in 2021. Maybe I'm the only one that. No, me too. I was afraid to say anything. Yeah. So if you uh, could get that out to all of us, Doug, I, I know I, can, I didn't oh. print it. You may have gotten it out to us and I didn't print it. All right, I'll send that back out to you guys both uh, in an email as well as um, I'll, I'll reshare um, a Google Drive link where, where I have all of the, the applicator, all of our um, conservation board materials. Um, so I'll, I'll get. I'll I get saw an email from you. I just couldn't uh, find the attachment. So I see that our next meeting is on February 2nd, but I think we might want to change it to 2021. 
Oh. Does it say 2020? My apologies. Easy to easy to do. Not uh, sure. I've, not sure please. I've written any checks yet for 2021, but I. We don't want to relive that, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. I think did I die? Is that an old schedule? Because I think I have a 2021 on uh, this one here. No, it's on, the, uh, it's on, on the, the agenda. agenda. Oh, on the agenda. Yep. Yeah. My, that's, yep. That's, that's my bad. I'll, uh, I can change that. Allowed for a few, uh, few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. There wow. we go. Yep. February 2021. There we go. All right, I'll change that and I'll get that updated and I'll get it sent to the website so they have the uh, the correct date. Does the board have anything else to discuss? Um, Jim, uh, I think could, there, there. Could, could I could I offer something? Yeah. So thanks, Jim. Hey, um, so Doug, I know you briefly mentioned that the, that the soil and the water conservation district has released the spring. Um, mm -hmm. so, although you said you hadn't gotten any of it, your uh, your email on that yet, and I did notice on this it was actually in the paper, so I did cut it out. Um, so Doug, it did say that you have to orders need to be sent by mail, email, or online by March fifth after they come. So. I, is that something we could take a look at at the next meeting? And um, if you guys wanted to uh, revisit, I know in the, in the past, um, Jim, I, I believe, you know, I remember last time I was on a liaison to this board, I think we handed out trees at one time. Uh, and this year, there's, they're, gonna, they're offering a, a whole li a list of new trees available. And I'm wondering if that might be something that, the, um, that we might want to look at this um, on the, uh, you guys might want to look at this on the conservation board only because as we're a lot of the issues going around town lately have been the removal of all those ash trees that they're either being removed because of that they're falling down or they're in danger of falling down. They're old, they're diseased, of course, they're dead. And um, I thought maybe this might be something, oh, us a way that we could do something proactive in the in the spring, unless you guys have been doing this every year all along, um, that maybe take a look at this again. Might be nice for some of the people that want to, um, that might want to plant trees in place of their old, the old ash ones that are, are leaving us. It might be time for us to rethink uh, doing that, but it, it still is very difficult for us to pull that sort of thing off uh, because of COVID. Uh, that was going to be my comment, Jim. Yeah. You know, after having run four of those, I, I, Deb, I, I understand what you're saying. And yeah, I saw that same article about, or the a Facebook posting about the trees and things. But I, I just think April is still going to be a difficult time to be doing something like that that requires you know, pretty much interaction with the public and to try to pull that off in a socially distant, that that would be a lot of work for us. Believe you me, like yeah. I say, I've done four of them. That would be an awful lot of work under these circumstances, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Just thought and I'm not sure what our participation would be. Right. Even the board working together to get something ready, it would be hard for us. Yeah. I just think it's a big challenge this year. You know, they do it every year. So, you know, yeah. maybe something to, to keep in our hip pocket for next year, because that would have put it about a five year interval since the last time we did it. I think, right, Jim, yeah. if I remember right? Yeah, the last time we did it was 2015, I believe. Yeah. And yeah. since we're all the same board members and so all five years older, at some point <laughs> we might want to start getting the scouts working with us for. Uh, <laughs> You know the soil lifting and bending and whatever else has to be going on. Well, just thought I yeah I agree. I mean, but maybe there's a if they're if they're going to do this program through the soil and water, maybe they have a way that they're going to hand these out this year in a different. Maybe they have yeah. an idea. But, there might be a way we could package up. So if we did something like a, a single shrub and a single tree together, which I think is what we did in 2000 and what you guys did in 2008, which was before my time, um, is there might be a way to package it together and have them sort of already individually done. And, you know, whether we, you know, somebody just is there and we hand them out or if we place them, 
you know, sort of around wherever we are um, so that somebody can grab it on their own and they're individually individually done. So there's there's less personal interaction. It's more of a, or, or even a drive-by. You know, I also do a drive-by drop-off. Somebody, somebody drives up. You know, if we did it like the community center drives up. It was the a mask. Loop. Yeah. Yeah, we just we put it in their, put it in their <laughs> trunk or put it in the back of their vehicle and then let them drive away. They don't even have to get out. I've seen um, the drive uh, drive up things working, and we you know, we did one in the uh, summer to fall time with um, a chicken barbecue at our church. But um, I just well, personally is like I want to see what's happening with this new strain that's so much easier to catch, and you know it's um, as far as guidance goes about what we can or can't would be engaging in. That's just me. That's just my opinion. Well, I, I did send you all an email here a couple of days ago, and I suggested that uh, as much as I'd love to see us back together again uh, with social distancing, my guess is that some of us initially will choose to continue with Zoom. So we may be able to do a hybrid meeting with some of us on Zoom and some of us actually together in the same room. And it's nice when we can be in the same room and pass some things around with paper. And I'll be looking at uh, the big screen in the auditorium. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but I, uh, I, I guess I do continue to, uh, to support what Bert said. I, I think that uh, to do another tree and shrub handout this year is probably not in the cards, uh, the way I see it. There's an awful lot of work that goes in behind it to get ready. It's one thing to say, okay, I've got a table out in right. the community center parking lot that, that one person can kind of run out and place five trees on and, you know, five little packages of bushes and, okay, residents drive by, hop out of your car and grab one and stuff. But believe you me, it's a lot of work to put those packages together. And, and, you know, I, I just, I, I just don't think of gather, you know, I'm not into, I guess I'll say it this way. I'll leave other members of the board to do as they will. I'm not interested in participating in that type of event by April. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So, well, I think that's probably a topic best addressed next year. And hopefully yeah. by next year, we'll all be properly inoculated against this evil disease. So, and Jim, one other thing I wanted to just um, mention from the town board that tomorrow night on Zoom at seven o'clock is our, the town board organizational meeting. Agenda, agenda's online uh, now, if any of you want to take a look at it. Um, it's kind of an interesting meeting. It's pretty, it's relatively quick, but we go through all the housekeeping uh, uh, things that, that have to be procedures and, uh, and rules that have to be passed um, to start our year off. And among those are appointments to and re, re, reappointments to boards, uh, uh, the liaison, uh, the planning board, zoning board. And you find folks tomorrow night, I get to um, reappoint you, Mr. Um, Olmsted, the chair of this fine uh, conservation board, along with um, your other, all the, all the members that are on this um, uh, Zoom meeting tonight, to Jeff Bartachi, Roseanne Cohen, Bert. Burton Gordon, Daniel Moore, Patricia Schlickler, Noel um, Slagenter, and Paul Sugnet. I get to um, uh, mention you, appoint you all tomorrow night. And so I just, I guess, want to take this time to, if you would like to join the meeting, that's fine. But um, to really thank you for your, um, all the service you've done um, throughout the years, because I know there's a lot of years behind just many of the, many of you I'm looking at right now. So um I don't, and who is, who has the old, I, on this, I was going to mention tomorrow, who's the, the, um, has the most tenure on this committee? Noel has me beat by a few months, I think. Does he? I yeah. think okay. that's right. Okay. Uh, I think it, it's Noel, Jim, is then it? Paul, then me, and then a bunch of the other youngsters. Okay. Not, not okay. to make you all feel old, but Noel joined the plan or the conservation board when I was three. <gasps> oh my goodness, really? 
But yes, well, Noel's our senior member. <laughs> so you might have been you might have been four when I came along. Huh? Yeah. So Doug, Doug's twelve, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's, no, I won't say that, Noel. I don't know if you want me to say, say that. But anyways, you guys, the, the um your experience, your wealth of knowledge, what you've added and contributed yeah. to this board. I know that um I speak from the rest of the town board and thank you. Um and I'm so pleased and honored to be able to um to reappoint you all tomorrow evening. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Debbie. And I wanna I wanna also thank everybody here for uh, continuing to serve the conservation board in the town of Penfield. And uh, Noel and I have one other thing in common and uh, we didn't know each other back in 1953, but we were both at the Scout Jamboree. <laughs> ah, that's great. <laughs> wow, that's neat, that's cool. That is cool. Makes me feel better. That was two years before I was born. <laughs> so, I feel like a young kid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think oh, we so have. So I think I'm else. older than you, Bert. So Jim, I have one more yeah, question. Maybe. Yeah. And I guess as to Roseanne and even Noel, is, it, is anything happening with EMC? EMC? I've gone Thank to um, some of the Zoom meetings, and they're been interesting. We had somebody from the zoo, and we had a. Uh, somebody on solar energy and we were supposed to go to the eco park, I think this month, but that's been canceled. So, but I find them really interesting that zoo talked about all the different programs they have for all the kids. And it was interesting. It's that spoke about having uh, subcommittees. Has that progressed at all? I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, Debbie, one of the things the town did for the last, I think, several years, you, you've had an event that I think was uh, billed as a secure um, paper shredding event. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I find that very useful. It's amazing how much old paper I have in my basement that I really don't wanna just throw in the trash when you've lived as long as I have, uh, I've, I've got financial documents that'll fill big barrels and I'd love to have them securely disposed of. So uh, I guess I would encourage you to keep doing that sort of thing. This year's was a little bit messed up. The, uh, the truck that was supposed to come did not. I don't know if you're aware of that. I do for that. So I and know we've talked about this as believe it or not, we've talked about that as far as some other recycling events that we'd like to do. So we've, we've some of us, we've been talking as a board. So I will um, make sure I include the paper shredding and make, that it's highly wanted event, a needed event. That we'll Anybody else have any other items? Nope. Then I guess we could have a motion for adjournment uh, to our meeting of February 2nd. So moved. So moved. Second. And no objections. Well, thank everybody for their presence here tonight. And thank you. I want to specifically you. thank not only Doug and Brad for being our uh, town staff people that help us here in the conservation board, but also Dave Renner and Brian. Uh, is it? Delameter, did I get that right, Brian? It is. Delimiter. I think so. I think yeah. I got it right. Anyway, yeah. thank yes, you Jim. to thank Penfield you. TV for helping us put this on. And I don't think we're the top rated program on TV. <laughs> Pretty close though. Pretty close, Jim. <laughs> but we, tonight, we try. Hey, tonight you were competing against the school board meeting. Yeah, school board meetings. Brian's juggling two two meetings right now, ours and uh, school boards. Okay. Well, thank you all, and thank you. Have thank a happy you. New Year. Good night. Good night. Right. Have a good night, everyone.